Darren, I don't recognize. I don't see enough damage on the face. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> Exhausted. I'm still pretty tired after a fight like that. So, uh, yeah, I feel, other than that, I really didn't take that as much damage as I usually do. Got to have a little bit of stitches right here, but nothing crazy. What was the game plan for him coming in tonight? I think we, we usually know that you, you like to walk forward, throw hands, and, and see what happens. But did you have a particular game plan for him coming in tonight? Yeah, I mean, I knew that we we're going to end up in these scrambles. I knew that he liked to go um, Kimura traps from the, from, the, uh, full, from the guard. So anytime I was in the guard, I had to keep my head in the center. Um, I knew he would go for some of these guillotines. I knew if he went for them, I could probably end up on top of it. And then move my feet, go lateral back and forth, and uh, keep my defense high because he swings those wild overhand rights and hooks. So I was ready for those. I knew he was going to throw heavy calf kicks. He caught me with a couple of them. I seen a lot of them. But you know, other than that, he, he fought exactly how I thought he was going to fight. He's just a dog. You, you mentioned the guillotines. I think that first guillotine that he was able to get you in, I think you caught him before that he got you into that. So he immediately started having some blood. When you first, when you see blood like that, is your first inclination, is that mine or his? That's exactly what I thought. I, I look on the mat and I see, see a lot of blood. I'm like, man, I don't remember getting hit. I guess I'm bleeding. And then I looked, I'm like, oh, he's bleeding. That's a change. Usually I'm the one bleeding everywhere, but this time he was the one bleeding. And you talked a little bit out there. Were any of those guillotine chokes, were you in any danger, or was it just a matter of uncomfortable, but you were still able to kind of keep your head clear and work out of them? Yeah, I really don't think he was. They were pretty tight. He had actually a pretty good grip, maybe one of the stronger grips, but I never felt like I was choking. I was stuck. I kept on moving over and over again. I knew I couldn't do it. I had to wait him out, but I really didn't feel like he was close to putting me out or anything. And then when you get to the end of... Uh, we pretty confident. I mean, it's a unanimous decision, but did you feel pretty confident? I felt like after the end, I thought I saw you raise your hands up. You felt like you knew, but were you pretty confident when it went to the, the scorecards? Yeah, I was pretty confident going in there. I knew it was a close fight because it was a pretty close fight, but I landed some clean shots. I got the last takedown. I'm the one putting the pressure. I'm the one trying to make things happen. So I, I figured the, the last little bits got me the win. And it's got to be tough. You know, you want to have your moment out there, but also you see him take the gloves off. You want to give him this chance. You know, does it take any – I guess it's not going to take anything away, but does it sour the moment any knowing that on the opposite end that your opponent laid the gloves down in a loss? No. I mean, I read that if he lost, he was going to retire. Okay. So it was something I thought he might do. Um, it was an honor to share the cage for him for his last fight. You know, he's been fighting almost as long as me. I fought on some of my early UFC cards with him. And uh, it didn't suck. I mean, I'm 40 now. My, my day's coming, so I hope somebody's not going to be mad at me if I'd have to do the same thing. Speaking of 40, I think that was your 40th fight. I think it's – I yep. tried to do the math quickly. I think your 28th UFC fight, 29th. something along those 29th. 29th. It's unbelievable. I mean, I'm, I know we've asked you this before, but when you when you – think back to when you started would you ever did you ever think that you would see this number of UFC fights when you know how hard it is to stay in an organization like this did you ever think you would get to the 29 let alone still look like you got many more in you no I mean I, I was telling somebody the other day when I was uh the young me the young beginning <laughs> UFC Darren would always make fun of the old guys oh look at this old guy messing around with them calling them old guys well guess what I'm the old guy so I never thought I'd be 40 still doing this but Man, am I glad I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, I won't ask when, when you're done because obviously it doesn't look like you're anytime soon, but is the amount of fights a year now more the key just to see how your body feels? Or do you have a certain number? Is it like two fights a year? I mean, what's the, is, there, is there a certain sweet spot for you? I don't like to go any more than two. Yeah. I mean, I had one last year, one this year. Last year I got hurt, this year I got hurt. So, I mean, which is yeah. fine. You know, both times I felt like I came back and my body's recovered. So, yeah. one to two fights. I shoot for two, but if I don't get two, one's okay too now in my life now. I don't have to be the guy who's fighting every week anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you've, done, you've done your work, that's for sure. Yes. I mean, like you said, you're 40. You, you've got 29 fights in there. Are you still learning new things, or is it just a matter of just staying at a high level? But when you go into camp and when you're with these young guys and you're rolling around, you're doing things, you still feel like you're picking up new tricks that you could still show in there? A hundred percent. I mean, I work with Joey. I work with my coach, Chris Holdsworth. I work with Danny Castile. I work with Faber and I'm learning stuff all the time. You know, I mean, I think when I stop, I stop learning and I stop having fun doing that and while I'm learning, then it probably is time to, to 
hang it up because I've been saying this for years. Once you stop learning, you're starting to die in this in this game. So you got to keep evolving your game because if you watch, this game is evolving fast. So I'm trying to pick up as much as I can and have fun still doing that. Yeah. And you got to think, I mean, I think, I can't remember if the commentary team talked about, you guys drill guillotines a lot over there at that camp. Am I wrong? Yeah, no, we, we, it used to be team guillotine for yeah. a long time, you know, so, uh, and everybody tries to get me in it, you know, and that's been one of my best defense all my life. So, and I can tell you, very, very few people have ever caught me in that move. I love it. So, like you said, do um, you give yourself some time to sort of rest and recover from this, you know, you know, bask in the wind, or are you back in the gym on Monday? I'll take a week off, maybe two. Um, I'll still stay working out. I'll stay on the diet. Um, I promised my son that um, I'll take a couple weeks to work with him. He's just now starting to get in martial arts himself. Oh, that's awesome. He's been doing it for about a year and a half. And uh, when I'm in camp, I can't really work with him as much because yeah. I'm focused on me. But I was like, you know what? After this fight, we'll just take a step back, and we're going to work with his boxing, work with his uh, wrestling, work with his jujitsu, and just, you know, focus on the next generation. And I'm ex I've been saying this for years that – if my kids don't do the fighting stuff, I'm walking away from it. I really wouldn't. I really didn't want to be a coach. Yeah. But if they stick around, I'm sticking around. So it looks like I'll probably be sticking around for a while. That's awesome. And it's definitely so. The whole MMA thing. He's not just picking in one particular discipline. You're. You're. No. He's running the whole game. He wants it all. He wants to be a fighter. That's his new goal. Is he wants to be a UFC fighter. He watches fights. He studies fights. You know, he, uh, he does jiu-jitsu tournaments, he's doing the Muay Thai, he wants to get more wrestling, so he's all the way in, and I, I've been trying to do it for years to get him into it, and all of a sudden he wants to do it, and I feel like he's got a clearer path than I ever had, because I can show him everything yeah. I, went, I did wrong and lead him the right way. Well, you kind of answered the question. I wondered, I was going to say, does that make you proud, Dad, that he's following in your footsteps? Or was there ever any hesitancy to have him get it? But it sounds like this is something that you were hoping that he has had as a possibility. I mean, you always, it's good. I, I'd be, I'm going to be nerve-wracking watching him do this stuff. You want to watch him do jujitsu, but I've got, he's got a path that most people don't have, right? Like, I've got the name. I know the people. We got the coaches. He doesn't have to work as hard as I had, I had to work. You know, I came, we come from Indiana. I had a small gym. I was one of the only big name guys from the area. He got it all right where we're at. And, and you got to think, come for, say, say he starts competing, say he's near his, full fight, for his first fight. Are you going to be more nervous watching one of his fights for, than as for whatever you maybe felt before you walked into a fight? Always. You know, I mean, I get real nervous walking out. You know, I'm, just like you said, this is my 40th fight, 29th UFC fight, but I still get nervous. But I have control of it, though. I can control what happens in there. I control what I do. Watching him, I can only hope and pray, you know, <laughs> coach and yell. That's awesome. Congrats on the victory. It's always fun watching you go in there. Thank you. Well, <laughs>